Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to Hansa Matrix Investor Webinar. Today we are hosted by the CEO of Hansa Matrix, Ilmar Sosmans, and CFO Ilmar Smatsevsk. As always, we will start with company's presentation, which will be followed by questions and answers session. Therefore, you're kindly invited to participate by typing your question in the questions box in the settings panel zone. Ilmar Mari, I invite you to start the presentation. Yeah, yeah. hello everybody who joined our webinar. I'm happy to see people in this kind of nice, nice winter <laughs> day. <laughs> and uh, we are talking. We'll be talking about Q4 and 12 months results of 2019 and a little bit the events which are uh, starting in this year. So going to executive summary. Uh, business trends 2019 slash 2020. Uh, of course, business development, uh, there are several drivers which kind of pulls business uh, development. In EU, 5G networks expected to positively grow, grow also our sales in longer term. However, in short term, we are seeing that uh, some uh, Brexit uncertainties have delayed uh, investment processes in, in networks in, in Britain and also in uh, Central Europe countries. Uh, there is new thing instead of supply company supply chain disruptions. Uh, basically, uh, deficit of certain components have worked out. Uh, companies uh, globally have built new premises. For example, Murata, who was the one who had the diff uh, supply difficulties, have built completely new production production site in Japan. Also, the extended production supply uh, site in in Finland and few other places. So they are ready to. Fill, fill the needed quantities. However, we have a new a challenge that uh, component supply chain disruptions come uh, due to coronavirus outbreak, uh, which kind of is sh literally shutting down province, full province in China, and also uh, really uh, holding, putting on hold a lot of transportation and a lot of people, people movements over there. So also uh, this causing, this causing uh, disruption of the supply of parts that was uh, uh, first of all that's originating in asia and that's quite everything or most of the everything uh the officially the all manufacturing plants were were uh, stayed stayed closed for uh, win uh, winter holiday one extra week after one extra week they started to operate however due to difficulties of getting uh, people back to work and and getting from from homes and and also not able to to get there, and they're probably not working uh, on a full power, so full on full capacity. So despite fact manufacturing happens, still there are delays, delays are execution of orders. Uh, also, also that might also grow component sourcing costs for for some period. Uh, the, another macroeconomic trend uh, in Latvia uh, is faster than uh, planned, be some years ago. Salary inspection uh, inflation in 2019 year to year salary inflation reached 700 percent and consensus for year 2020 is still at a pretty high level six to seven percent respectively that's um, up on so-called generation change when we have uh, young people actually having changed the attitude and motivation to do certain works or not to do certain works and and kind of attitude towards uh, like uh, professional life. Uh, summary Q4 2019 Q4 summary. Uh, we achieved 17% uh, turnover growth from year before. Uh, we achieved 8% EBITDA year-to-year growth based on uh, compared to 2019 Q4. Uh, 2019 Q4 net profit was 81,000 euro, influenced by influenced by several other factors. Wage inflation, a European investment bank loan, a remuneration provisions, losses from investments in associates. So, so the results, the results at the end was not not so much uh, that we would like to. Uh, comparison with peers, uh, uh, despite the fact that uh, Q4 was a bit lower uh, than maybe an average to the. Uh, quarters before. Uh, I also have to add that Q4, of course, was infected by, affected by, by many many holidays that, uh, according to very lucky calendar for 
employees uh, all uh, Christmas and New Year holidays happened middle of week so so actually there was certain disruption of how company operated last two weeks of December so so there's many many days off actually which actually is adding up to the maybe the people are more and more uh, holiday and, and can return with the more power to the work hopefully uh, but nevertheless uh, on EBITDA margin we are second second among peers and uh, and uh, and that, that that's a good thing. <clears throat> uh, so per market value range uh, 4.8 times up to 15.7. Okay, uh, that's we are so basically we are quite at the moment quite uh, valuation is not high, so that just means that's good time to buy shares. Uh, let's go into Q4 results, and uh, I'll pass a password to Maris. He will continue in detail detailed review of the figures. Yeah, thank you, Ilmars. Hello, everyone. This is Maris, CFO of the company. Uh, so, uh, Q4 results uh, in detail. Yes, um, so in the fourth quarter of 2019, uh, the company sales amounted to almost 6 million euro which as Ilmar already mentioned is a 17 year on, uh, percent year on year increase uh, but a slight 3% decrease as compared uh, to the previous uh, quarter uh, Q3 of 2019 so uh, in the uh, fourth quarter of 2019 three main regions to which uh, manufacturing services uh, were provided were Baltic states so with 46% of total Nordic countries 26% of total and uh, other EU countries 21% of total sales. Well, uh, services provided to the companies outside the EU uh, this quarter were 7% uh, of total and uh, in the uh, last quarter of uh, 2019 sales to all regions increased on year-on-year -year basis. Uh, next, if we look at uh, sales by market uh, sector, uh, two main uh, sales sectors uh, were data networks products with uh, 35% and industrial with 42% of the total sales. Uh, Internet of Things, uh, optics and, and photonics and other product sectors are smaller than these two and are in the range from 5 to 13% of the total sales. In the uh, fourth quarter of 2019, sales in all the all the market sectors except other products uh, have increased on year-on-year -year basis, uh, while as you can see in the chart, data network segment uh, has dropped compared to previous three quarters, which uh, we believe is due to quarterly fluctuations in the customer order flow and also impacted by the holiday season in December. Uh, so, uh, this quarter EBITDA achieved was uh, 560,000 euro, which is 8% uh, up on a year-on-year -year basis. However, it's a 41% decrease uh, compared to previous quarter. Uh, so, the company operated with net profit of 81,000 euro in fourth uh, quarter, and this uh, reported net profit uh, is uh, small but still it's improvement uh, compared to Q4 2018 and uh, Q3 2019 which uh, both were finished uh, with small net losses. So EBITDA margin uh, in fourth quarter of 2019 was uh, at 9.4% level and net profit margin at 1.4% uh, level. level. Uh, EBITDA margin in, uh, in 2019 Q4 was negatively influenced by holiday season in December and also by uh, Zinat and Sparks uh, financial result consolidation which was done uh, for most of the year in Q4 2019 uh, which also influenced EBITDA by uh, some 80,000 euro. Uh, the next uh, if we look at the 12 months results or the whole year so we achieved a record high turnover of almost 24 million 
which is a 13% year-on-year sales growth. And then if we calculate the compound annual growth in the period from 2015 to 2019, then it equals to 12.3%. Uh, next, uh, 12 months sales by region, uh, similar uh, as if we look at the quarters, so, so the Baltics is the largest region, 43%. Uh, Nordic countries 26%, rest of EU 25 and outside EU 5%. And as you can see, all the regions are growing on a year-on-year -year basis. Uh, next, uh, uh, sales by market sector, mm, uh, data networks and industrial products are two largest sectors with uh, 42 and uh, 38 percent from total sales iot optics and other product sectors are smaller and are in the range from five to eight percent of the total sales uh, in fourth quarter of 2019 data networks have slightly decreased but all other uh, sectors uh, show uh, growth on year-on-year -year basis uh, next, uh, profitability uh, for the whole year EBITDA achieved was uh, 3.6 million, which is 8% up uh, on year-on-year -year basis, and uh, net profit result was almost 200,000 uh, euros, which is significantly down uh, on year-on-year -year basis. Uh, uh, so the profitability EBITDA margin was almost 15% and net profit margin almost 1%. So both EBITDA and profit margins in uh, 2019 was influenced by significant wage and salary inflation and then a decrease in net profit margin in 2019 was influenced by uh, a European Investment Bank financing cost provisions uh, and losses in associated companies where Hansa Matrix ownership uh, has increased over the year. And uh, finally, the trailing 12 months results, uh, which is essentially the same as the 2019, uh, just the difference here is that dynamics is compare, compared to previous quarter. Or, uh, not year-on-year -year results and so the turnover achieved is 24 million which is uh, almost four percent off up to the previous quarter 12 months uh, trailing trailing results and EBITDA of 3.6 million which is uh, 1.2 percent up to the previous quarter 12 months trailing results uh, and now I then give floor to Ilmar to continue the presentation. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you, Maris. Uh, now we're switching to other other parts of the uh, uh, report. Um, R&D Q4 R&D turnover. Uh, we are we are seeing that there's some increase in the last quarter. A partially partially R and D R and D income is of course from the services, the, the product development services and projects that are run, run by uh, Hansmatics as, as well as some some uh, product sales that we account as a R and D R and D activity, and that's growth is 15% uh, year to year basis, and also that corresponds to 13.2 share of Q3 Q4 Q4 sales results. That's a mistake here. Uh, 12 months R&D B2B sales reported 2.27 million, uh, which is 43% growth, and and that's uh, that's uh, in 12 in 12 month period uh, represents 9.5% share of the of the turnover. Investments during uh, Q4, uh, Hansmann is then quite substantial investments. Uh, they just come to in completion the, of the of the investment program and it was uh, almost 1 million made in q4 made almost 1 million investments in product production capacity increase 
effectiveness improvements, adoption of a new production technologies. And during the year, overall was 3.3 mil million euros invested. Uh, associate companies, uh, during Q4, Hansen Motors uh, added three, 397 thousand euros to the investments led with technologies to finance the development and consolidation of 3D display technologies. Mostly Q4 was uh, really spent uh, activities was devoted to new headset, uh, our headset development and finalizing uh, finalizing its uh, uh, finalizing this design so so we can we can go out and do initial demonstration of new new system. Uh, total balance sheet of investments in light space technologies at the end of 2019 amounted to 8.1 million, uh, where 3.7 is a share capital and 4.5 roughly is a convertible loan. <clears throat> During Q4, uh, Hansmetics made 97,000 euro investments in Antsparks to finance the development of high tech city real estate project. And uh, during a year, it was amounted for 415,000 uh, euros. Uh, total balance sheet value of investments uh, in Antsparx says that at, at the end of 2019 amounted to 1.662 uh, million euros, out of which 800,000 uh, roughly is share capital and 123 is convertible loan. Uh, let's go further. A business development of light space technologies. Uh, during Q3, Q4, uh, uh, several uh, three global tier one OEMs, biggest names in AR VR, have chosen uh, to build uh, to build VR AR prototypes using large multi light space multifocal VR headset photonics technology. That was uh, the result of the very active marketing campaign or, or marketing contacts and and the sales sales process of the technology. Uh, in parallel, light space worked on its own uh, headset. And uh, so uh, you know, cannot cannot really control what's going on with the customer, so you need to do yourself some work as well. Uh, in August 2019, uh, was received installed vacuum coating line to enable larger size multi-plane screen manufacturing that in Ventspils factory. So that was part of the investment event. And um, also a global tier one display manufacturer has chosen light space technology to develop New generation 3D uh, media media displays, and and finally uh, already happened event uh, January January February this year that new multifocal air headset IG1000 at SPI uh, AR VMR VR 2020 Expo and Conference actually being recognized was recognized by many industry experts as the best image quality headset among all commercially available next generation headsets also including all next generation headsets uh, those who, who was presented to this uh, professional forum so that's i think is a uh, brilliant news to our team that uh, that we have by kind of hard work achieved some big success in that area of course uh, plans are to go further with design and, and next start to manufacture it next year so other events during reporting period on October 29 to 19, uh, there was extraordinary shareholder meeting of Consumetics. Uh, elected the new supervisory council member was Tirson. Simultaneously, Chris Tirson has left the supervisory board position. On October 29, extraordinary uh, shareholder meeting approved the remuneration policy for the board as directors and supervisory council. Uh, this is with accordance to new directive requiring requiring uh, open and and kind of open more openness into um, corporate governance the goal of the policy is to establish key remuneration principles facilitating company's business strategy long-term interests and sustainability uh, also a company decided uh, after doing quite a number of large investments new 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 equipment a company decided to change fixed asset depreciation policy with regard to manufacturing equipment to ensure ensure that uh, residual values are better matched to the fair values of fixed assets. The changes have positive impact of company's net profit on, in 2019 in amount of 345,000 euros. This is not cash item, so basically it's just depreciation. We realize that the uh, ongoing depreciation is too, too aggressive to the amount of actually assets that we are having uh, counted into our balance sheet. 
also when spills factory 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 uh, manager Aldis Timoshka resigned as council and expansion board member on December 4, 2019, uh, by personal reasons here. So these are all events and uh, events after reporting period. Council Metrics has signed uh, renew renewable agreements with SCB Bank and CCB Links to extend maturity of factoring order guarantee and reverse factoring for next annual period of one year for total amount of 4.56 million of working capital financing. That also include export financing transactions. And uh, questions and answers uh, answer session. Uh, uh, Eva, maybe you take a word now or? Sure, sure. Yeah. So we have received four questions uh, before the webinar. Uh, mm -hmm. Ilmar, have you included them in the presentation? Yeah, they are, yeah, they are on following mm -hmm. slides. So I'll continue with those questions. And there is time for new ones Yeah, for attendees. So we go to questions. Uh, how company plans to manage current situation caused by coronavirus spread in China? Uh, at the moment, all Hansomatic suppliers in China have resumed operations, but most of them not at full capacity. The production components affected by the virus situations are, are some, most of these are print circuit boards, which are custom-made uh, custom boards for assembly. Uh, of course, uh, supply chain disruptions affects uh, or men or many more of the component supply chains that we really cannot measure, influence cannot be measured. Uh, that uh, at least we know delivery delays, uh, there's some others been shipped already out, but generally uh, we could expect the delays in the range two to four weeks. Uh, what that means that practically we have, when we have products with we have material buffer, maybe for, for uh, two to four weeks, they are not affected really. However, those who we, we run uh, really needed uh, resupply, resupply materials, uh, we might need to reschedule uh, production of certain products. Uh, also, we're looking to act, uh, looking alternative common supply sources. Also, the alternatives in most cases are with long lead, also with long lead times, and also dependent on raw material supply from China suppliers. So, there is kind of currently no real alternative routes, I think, in the world for these for these uh, for these kind of several types of materials so we have to somehow count count on chinese people health and 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 good health and getting getting more getting back to work at some point uh question number two any new clients contracts yeah, actually we are currently doing through the phase that we are having several uh, new customers every quarter in Q4, first deliveries are made for uh, three new customers, industrial IoT sectors, Nordic and other countries. Uh, those customers we started in Q4, we were uh, forecasting a business around 1 million in this year. Uh, in the beginning, uh, uh, new, new volume, yeah? in the beginning of 2020, uh, already the production already being planned for two other new clients with potential volumes up to one point, reaching up to 1.5 million euros already in this year. So yes, we do have. Uh, what is the expectations for solid inflation for current year? Uh, consensus forecast for 2020, solid inflation among bank analysts stands at 6 to 7 percent. Uh, for consumers, it's expected to manage every solid increase for different play groups within around 5 percent, and uh, that's something uh, something we are planning to compensate maybe with the. Uh, increase of efficiency, maybe we, have, we can put some, of course, some put to the price, some uh, input, uh, increase of costs into prices to customers. But of course, we need to manage ourselves uh, some F improve uh, F efficiency, improvements of efficiency, and also uh, co compensating uh, investments in automation to compensate that. What would be the biggest challenge for 2020? Uh, Let's say it's, it's as always. There are no, nothing new here. Uh, nothing new here. Uh, all level qualified employee availability to ensure growth. Uh, existing employee training. So availability, as you know, uh, unemployment is very low currently. So there's no. I have to really look at people who are already employed. Uh, did probably. 
other two in, um, two challenges are investor attraction for light space technologies in order to finance the next development um, round or or next period to develop into the manufacturing company now and also uh, we are planning to sell in Sparks real estate project so also the challenge is to find right buyer and with right uh, right uh, price these are probably the challenges for 2020 besides that certainly we have the regular challenges increase uh, increase technological level growth uh, volumes and and kind of uh, develop business but that's been kind of regular no one considers that as a challenge anymore so i think uh, uh okay we have to make a comment that alternative performance measures that we used in into the presentation we have to define them and uh uh, these these the alternative performance indicators can be found on page 33 of the council matrix so an audited interim condensed consolidated financial statements for the 12 month period ended 31 December 31 2019 okay, there is spelling mistake here uh, as well so uh, thank you for the, for this part i'm ready to proceed with other questions thank you we have received two New question. So uh, let's uh, jump right to the first one. How yeah. much additional capex is needed at light space for the final design of the headset and setting up the production by first quarter 2021 as planned? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I can go straight to straight answers. Uh, we, we are expecting, of course, a minimum, a little bit minimum, as a minimum or as a as a kind of as a runway for maybe two year period to st also including start startup phase uh, i would say uh, the minimum would be starting with three a maximum like, let's say comfortable would be five seven million euros and uh, that's that's something uh, we are currently talking to investors mm -hmm. thank you yeah. and the second question that we have here have you agreed any specific production volume for the headsets for this tier one O E M company for 2021 or longer? Uh, not yet. However, however, we, we've been we've been uh, having demo demo roadshow right now with uh, I would say the selected uh, companies uh, for from influential markets like medical procedures like car manufacturing uh, car matching aircraft manufacturing uh, i think currently i think we can quite safely consider that uh, initially there will be hundreds of needed for some initial phase and then of course it will be phase of the phase of the introduction content uh, adaptation to these new headsets and 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 there will be some kind of uh, some flat period then it start to grow again uh, it's not it's not one company we are talking with companies several several and and uh, we want to it be launched into several key application areas simultaneously uh, like medicine car manufacturing uh, car servicing and aircraft manufacturing and and uh, servicing maintenance maintenance and training as well so for those we have at least five companies like uh, influential uh, global tier one companies that we are right now uh starting to work regarding of course it's just product that's launched and we just did demo so uh we will do during this year planning of of the planning of the activity of course but uh, as i say we need to complete design we need to uh, get it get it ready we have to industrialize this prepare for manufacturing so it's quite much job before we start it uh, of course during this year there will be we will talk to them more than once about what would be needed and how to do of course forecasting and planning of the manufacturing and that's of course of course kind of kind of positive positive side of the of the problem yeah mm -hmm. thank you a follow-up question on the topic does the capex require raising additional equity through hansa matrix or light space directly uh, the plan is uh, generally plan is to raise raise additional uh, uh additional uh, additional capital to light space technologies directly uh not 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 through the consumatics consumatics i think is having already a fair share of the ownership uh, and the plan is not to exceed uh, 50 percent 
to keep kind of uh, high high minimum so close to close to 15 maybe at least for the time uh, being and at some point of course you can decide uh, go to act further but at, i think at this moment it's directly to light space Mm -hmm. Thank you. At this moment, seems that we, you have managed to answer all the questions. Let's wait perhaps a minute longer to see whether there are yep. no new ones coming in. Uh, so while we are waiting, I'll shortly, uh, I'll, I'll slowly start to wrap this up. Um, Participants, uh, thank you for attending the webinar. Uh, Mar, Ilmar, thank you for the presentation and thank you for the uh, honest answers given. Uh, we have recorded this webinar, so for those of you interested, the recording will be soon available in Hansa Matrix announcements and also a NASDAQ Baltic YouTube channel. Uh, once again, thanks to all for joining. See you at the next webinar then. Yeah, thank you everyone who spent time with us and hopefully we'll meet again in next webinars. Yeah, bye.